So, hey guys, and welcome to another layout update for February of 2017. Now, as you can see, um, a lot has changed. I have ballasted most of the layout, and also a few other changes have been made, and I will talk about them in this video. So, let's get started. So, obviously, the first major change, as you can obviously see, is I have ballasted um, most of the layout. So... It's taken me a couple of weeks um, working mainly on the weekends and a few hours um, in the evenings after school and stuff. Um, at first I did this whole first outer loop, um, completed that this weekend and then, or last week sorry, and then I started doing the inner loop. Um, so I've gotten from here from the power connectors to around where the station will start on that curve um, and I've done that this weekend and I've also filled in in between both loops with other ballast so it looks realistic and I really like how it looks over here on the junction with the ballast and how um, I made it so that the ballast would not interfere with the points or anything and yeah I think it looks really nice and over here I had to be a bit clever because I had the wiring that connects to the DC controller. Um, and so what I just did is I cut some slits into the roadbed um, to put the wires in like I did over here. And so the wires are underneath here and underneath the ballast so it's hidden. And for that one I couldn't really hide the wires but so much but you know. Um, it looks pretty good, pretty realistic. And, um, of course, before I put down all of the ballast, I had to do the road bed. And I think I might have talked about this in the other, um, layout update. But this is the Woodland Phoenix road bed that comes in the strips. And so what you have to do is you have to cut it, um, to the length you want. And because it's foam, you can easily cut it into, um, curves and you can bend it, um, any shape you want. And in order to keep it straight or curved or whatever shape you want it, you set it down with the um, foam track glue over here and also some track laying pins for the foam road bed such as these. Um, there was a box that came with like 70 of them I think or something. Um, so yeah, set down the road bed and then I did the ballast on top of that. The only part that hasn't, um, I haven't put road bed down on is the container yards and that's because I want to have it like a um, kind of loading dock area where the rails are like on the pavement. So instead of having road bed and ballast, I'm going to keep um, the tracks lying on the baseboard and then maybe have like plastic cart or um, construction paper or whatever to fill in the gaps between the tracks so it looks like a road so trucks can drive up to the side and stuff and then coming up here it's like a little ramp a um, little gradient coming between the ground level of the baseboard and then moving up to the um, roadbed height so um, luckily my engines um, my mainly my class 92 and my class 66 will be running up the gradient and those are pretty strong engines so that I don't think they'll have too much difficulty. And because I'm doing all of this ballasting and I constantly have to check and make sure that, you know, the track still have electrical connection and stuff and to make sure the track is smooth before it completely dries, I've set up a little test train over here, um, a, network, a network rail, a maintenance of weight train, if you will, um, consisting of the breakdown train and a... Uh, goods van and a brake van um and then the class 08 in the back here which is used to test the sections as they're glued um it doesn't have a motor in it so i don't have to worry so i don't need um electrical connections to test out to see if the track is bumpy or not and then once the track is dry i usually pull this train with the class 66 um but this week for the final section of ballasting I'm going to use the class 37 to give the 66 a rest. And so I will show you guys how I balance my track, my method for doing it. Because I know um, some of my viewers uh, might want to, are starting layouts and might want to start a layout and don't know where to start. So 
um, I'm going to show y'all how I ballast my tracks. So before you ballast, you have to make sure that you have the right supplies. So what you need is um, some glue, some Elmer's glue or whatever glue you want. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as it comes in like the bottles that you can squeeze out of. Um, some water in a spray bottle so you can spray the water onto the track so the glue will be absorbed by the ballast. A spoon for spreading the ballast onto the tracks. And also this is optional but I also have a ballast spreader which makes it a bit easier. This is by Prozis. Um, it's not necessary um, but it does help the process. And then a paintbrush, ooh, my bad, a paintbrush for brushing the extra ballast out of the way um, in the tracks. And then, of course, the ballast. Now, I know this is almost empty, but I do have a second bottle over there. It's the Woodland Scenics um, Medium Ballast. I think I said that in another video. Um, so, yeah, I will show you guys my process. So... Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to ballast on this curved section of track right before the station on my layout. And so what you do is you take your ballast and you take your spoon. And then what you do is you lean it at an angle against the side of the roadbed and just move it along like this so that it covers the side of the roadbed like that. And then if you just do that on the other side... I'm doing this in, you know, one take, so pardon me if there are a few errors or goofs uh, like that. So if that happens where there's a gap without the ballast, uh, what you can do is you can kind of take your finger and spread some ballast, or you can just take some more ballast from the bottle and spread it along with the spoon carefully like that. So that's done. And then what you want to do is you just want to pat it down so that the ballast isn't too high above the sleepers. Like that. And then this is where the um, ballast spreader comes in. And so you just put it on the tracks here. And then you take your ballast and put it inside of the spreader. Like that. Uh, I don't put too much in at one time because um, whatever you put in, it will come out, so you can't stop it. And so, as you can see, it completely ballasted the rest of the section. And then you just take your finger and spread the ballast away from the sleepers so that they're still showing on top. And also, this is where you can use the paintbrush and just brush it out like that. Nice and simple. And then what you do is you just run your finger along here and make sure it's not covering up any sleeper. And then once again, uh, come in with the spoon and just shake a little bit of ballast on these sections so no more road bed is showing. Also some is needed over here. Yep, that should do it. And so once you're confident and you have your ballast in the place that you want it, this is where you come in with your spray bottle and just spray some water over the top of the ballast so that the glue will be absorbed by it. So just and you also have to make sure that um, the spray bottle can be forceful and possibly push the ballast out the way. And if that happens, you can just you know use your finger. Um, to move the ballast back into place and then before you put the glue down I come in with a bit of foam some leftover foam from the roadbed just to wipe the water off of the top of the rail so it doesn't create rust or anything and then what you do is you come in with your glue um, this bottle is almost empty I might have to make some more to finish this tutorial but what the glue is, it is a 50% mixture of water and a 50% mixture of glue, whatever glue, um, PVA glue or wood glue 
like this. It doesn't really matter. And then also a couple drops of dish detergent or washing up liquid as um, they say in the United Kingdom. And that's just to basically help it um, dilute so it can also be absorbed into the ballast more easily. And some people use a syringe or a needle or something to put the water, um, to put the glue on, sorry. Um, I just use this old Elmer School Glue bottle because it has a nice nozzle. And so you just come in and drench it with glue like so. So make sure you get the sides of the roadbed. So you can see it's kind of running, running out. Might have to refill this to finish the video. Hopefully I won't have to, but basically you get the point. Um, drench it with glue and then that's pretty much it. Once you do that, you just let it dry. Um, wait a, about 24 hours for it to dry and then it will dry rock hard like these sections. And also a quick side note, after you're finished ballasting the section and it dries um, the next day, um, just go in with a track rubber and rub the, um, the rail head, um, thoroughly to make sure that the glue and the water hasn't dried on because the dried glue will create a film on top of the rails that will stop, um, electricity from going to the train wheels. So make sure you do that and wipe that off. And then I also use, um, one of these spare foam nails for the roadbed to go in inside of the rails and just make sure that any um, stray pieces of ballast don't interfere with the flanges touching the rails and for this you can use a toothpick or um, a bobby pin or a paper clip or whatever something nice and thin to just kind of scrape extra loose pieces of ballast out of the flanges to make sure that the trains get the best connection to the rails as possible. So um, that's pretty much it for this layout update, a kind of how-to tutorial for ballasting. Um, I hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, um, leave them down in the comment section below. Um, so I will leave this video out like I've been doing with my past layout updates with a few running shots of the Pendolino and the Duke of Gloucester and possibly a couple other trains. So, thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!